going to go ahead and get started. Um, welcome. I'm going to share my screen. Let's see. All right. So welcome to the new spider series on focusing on the program you rise. So I'm going to talk about today. I'm Dr. Shannon Jones and with me I have uh, three students. Lindsay, Moriam, and Beza, and they're going to talk about their first year experience in the Integrated and Inclusive Science Program, where the goal of our program is to help first year students thrive in STEM. So it's a pleasure to be here with you to talk about this program. It's my absolute favorite component of my um, job here at the University of Richmond. So here's a brief layout of <clears throat> Uh, the topics I'm going to cover today. We're going to start with some introductions uh, for the students on, on the panel, and I'll, I'll talk about the goals of U Rise and SMART. So lots of acronyms there. I'm going to spend some time talking about those two particular programs, and then I'll turn it over to student panelists to talk about their perspectives and, and having just recently um, gone through the program, and then I'll open it up for questions from the attendees. Um, so my role at University of Richmond is my official title is as Director of Biological Instruction. I teach a variety of courses in the biology department, including science, math, and research training, or SMART, which I'll talk more about later. It's a first year uh, interdisciplinary science course. I also teach a sophomore and scholar residence uh, a course called Toxic Communities, which focus on my area of research and environmental justice. And then for, uh, I teach an upper level elective for biology majors. Students typically take this course in the junior or senior year and it's called the Science of Poisoning and it's a toxicology course. My training is in the field of toxicology. And what I'm gonna talk about today are the URIs and SMART programs that I coordinate. And I also um, mentor students on independent research projects related to air pollution. So I wear many hats at the University of Richmond. And now I just wanna take some time to allow the students to introduce themselves. And I'll start with Lindsay. Hi, my name's Lindsay Abelard. I go by she, her pronouns. I'm from Naples, Florida, and I'm a rising sophomore here at the University of Richmond. I intend to double major in biology and health studies. And Maureen? Hi, my name is Maureen Amina Mishan. I go by she, her pronouns. Um, I'm also a rising sophomore. I'm from Brooklyn, New York, and I didn't hear that last part. Could you repeat that? Oh, I'm planning on double majoring in math and biology. Thank you. And then Beza. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Beza Ispilatu, but I go by Beza, she, her pronouns. I'm also a rising sophomore. And I'm an international student from Ethiopia, and I'm planning on double majoring in business and biology. Awesome, thank you. So I'm going to delve into uh, URIs and SMART for just a bit. And I do want to encourage you all to use the question and answer feature. feature. Uh, so you won't be able to uh, ask questions out loud. So I encourage you as you listen to the presentation and you have questions, please use the Q&A feature um, in Zoom, and then we'll get to your questions at the conclusion of our presentation. All right. So just a little bit about U of R and our STEM majors. So why um, should you attend the University of Richmond and major in a STEM discipline? So lots of reasons I can think of. Uh, we have a ton of resources for our students to really uh, engage in uh, authentic research experiences, both in, in their coursework and in our faculty members labs where they can work on independent research projects. We are a small liberal arts institution. So we have pretty small class sizes. So I've never taught a class of more than 20 students. So we have an excellent faculty to student ratio where we can develop really rich relationships with our students. Uh, particularly in, in STEM departments, we are focusing on trying to increase the representation uh, of students that have been historically marginalized or underrepresented in STEM. So we're really working to not just diversify our classrooms and our research labs, but also make them inclusive. And so all of this, we really try to develop these close knit relationships with our students to offer a lot of support. We encourage peer mentoring as well as faculty mentoring. And we have a pretty strong alumni network for students to reach out to. Say you're applying to graduate school or medical school later, we have a rich 
network of alumni that we try to connect current students with. And then we, we really, in our classrooms, focus on student-centered learning, right? We want to use techniques that allow for all students to thrive and do well. And as I mentioned before, there are tons of uh, resources. So our students are encouraged to conduct research uh, with faculty mentor, uh, mentors, and this, these are paid research opportunities. You can get involved in research as early as after your first year of college. Um, and this is our beautiful science building here, Gottwald. Uh, and and uh, the research that we do here is cutting edge. Some of you may be familiar uh, with the work of Dr. Kelly Lambert kind of been all over the news and, and social media, how in her research lab, she says neuroscience she uses rat models and they taught rats how to drive cars. So really fun, innovative types of research projects can be found uh, in our STEM disciplines. Um, most people think if you're coming to major in science at University of Richmond, you gotta be on the pre-health track. And as you can see here, a lot of our students are indeed intending to go uh, on the pre-health track, but we also have students who are interested in other things. Um, maybe they wanna do research. Maybe they wanna go to grad school, vet school. We have students interested in physician assistance programs. So lots of pre-health avenues, um, but and then some students are undecided and that's okay. So I don't want students to think that if, if you major in a science field, you have to know right away what you wanna do. Some students come in and decide it. And that's what our faculty mentoring and it's advising our, our role as mentors and advisors is to help you figure out what you want to do with your degree. Um, and so I coordinate this program called Integrated and Inclusive Sciences. I like to think of it as, as a very unique, uh, innovative approach to how we support first year students at the University of Richmond who want to major in science. And the goal of this program is to increase the number of students from, on, from traditionally uh, underrepresented uh, backgrounds in science and math, right? Um, so we have programming that we want to use to build a diverse community of support where all students can succeed regardless of their background, regardless of their preparation in high school. So I firmly believe that students can come to University of Richmond, major in a science discipline and succeed, do well and not just that, but also thrive uh, in STEM while they're there. So I, we hope to uh, build this community of support. And to do so, we focus on intense skill development. Uh, as I mentioned before, we have these close peer and faculty mentoring networks and we provide our students with authentic research experiences so they can see themselves as scientists while they're here uh, at the University of Richmond. And so I'm gonna talk about the Integrated and Inclusive Science Program. It is a signature first year experience we have here. And it starts in the summer prior to students matriculation um, into the university in August, right? So students will come to a campus for two weeks uh, in the summer prior to their uh, first year. And URISE is that pre-first year summer program. It's open to all students, but as I mentioned before, one of our more important goals is to increase representation of, or to increase the number of underrepresented students who are intending to major in a STEM discipline. So in terms of underrepresentation, we're talking about um, first-generation college students, um, and students of color, but anyone is welcome to apply. We just ask for students who wanna participate in this program that they see the value in having um, a diverse group of learners in terms of STEM and skill development. So anyone can apply to URISE, although we do encourage uh, students from underrepresented backgrounds to apply. Students who participate in URISE, um, they will then go on to take an academic course called Science, Math, and Research Training. We have two sections of SMART, and in each of those sections, we can um, accommodate about 16 to 20 students. So we could accept up to 40 students overall in SMART. And this is an integrated science course that students will take in both the fall and the spring. I'll talk more about that later. And then at the conclusion of the first year, students who have taken SMART um, and have um, done the URS program are guaranteed a summer research experience that is paid. 
working with a research mentor at the University of Richmond. And then after the first year, our students go on to do lots of awesome things, participate in other high impact programs we have, such as um, the Sophomore Scholars and Residence Program. They continue to go on to conduct research with their mentors throughout their time at the university. Um, a lot of them are have interest in other um, disciplines. Some students like science and business or their study science and leadership. So we have lots of, of um, pathways our students can take after they complete their first year in URIs and SMART. And then uh, we even have another layer of support where we have students who have recently graduated from our program serving as post -packs. So they're working for another year or two after they graduate um, and they work to support this program. So lots of mentoring built in. So application deadlines, the URIs is, is the one that's most, uh, most recent. Well, actually it's deadline is pretty soon. It's on May 8th, which is this upcoming weekend. Um, the SMART application is also open now and it's due on June 1st. So if you haven't already submitted your application, uh, please do so by our deadlines. We don't want you to miss the deadlines. We'd love to have you participate in these programs. So I've been the coordinator for URISE since 2017. The program has been in existence for uh, since 2013. So we've seen several cohorts of students who come to U of R, participated in URISE, gone on to um, do very well in a STEM discipline and gone to graduate. Many of them go on to graduate professional school or um, they have jobs related to their uh, scientific interests. And it's just been a wonderful experience seeing these students mature and develop into young scientists. And you can see some pictures of our uh, past cohorts of URIs. Uh, it's broken up into two sessions. They're about two weeks each. You can see the dates here. So session one, June 15th and July 1st through July 1st. And the second session will run from July 6th through the 22nd. Um, when you apply, you can select which um, session works best for you. If you could attend either one, please indicate that on the application as well. So what are we hoping to accomplish with URISE? University of Richmond's integrated science experience. As I mentioned before, this is our summer um, pre-first year program, or might have heard the, these programs called, uh, called bridge programs. Um, and what we're trying to do is to remove the barriers that in the past or historically have impeded the persistence and retention of, of students of color and students from other, other underrepresented backgrounds in <clears throat> STEM disciplines. It's a two week experience, as I mentioned before, students do receive a small stipend for participating to help offset some costs they might have by um, being at U of R for two weeks over the summer, we realized that some students like to work, earn money prior to their coming to college. So we try to support them in that. Um, but really the goal of, the, of this program is to help students with matriculation when they come back in August. So we really believe in helping them connect with current students, their future professors, right? Providing them with lots of uh, opportunities for community building and skill building and with authentic research experiences. And again, as I mentioned before, all students are encouraged to apply. So we like to do lots of uh, fun things and lots of skill building. So I, I picked some pictures that I've uh, taken over my uh, few years that I've been coordinating URI. So some, an example of some of the things we've done in the past, we like to take students out into the city of Richmond. Richmond has a really rich history. Um, and one uh, place I always like to take students is to the Maggie Walker historic site. So Maggie Walker is a prominent figure in African-American history. She was the first woman, first black woman to own a bank. And so her house was converted to a national historic site. So lots of history to explore in the city. We try to get the students out into the city. Uh, we have gone to Charlottesville, about an hour away to pick peaches and do experiments on fruit flies. Um, we have students that we have uh, faculty to come in and talk about their research. And one biology professor in, in particular studies salamanders. So the students are seen here <laughs> observing salamanders. And then there's just lots of other opportunities for uh, URI as participants to connect with current students. So we have lots of dinners, lunches, mixers for students to try to get to know 
older um, current students. Oops. All right, so as I mentioned before, SMART, uh, another acronym of science, math, and research training is an academic course that all URISE participants will be automatically enrolled into, right? So URISE is a summer component, and then SMART is a course that students take in the fall and spring semester. It's an integrated science course that integrates biology, chemistry, and calculus. So at the conclusion of SMART, students will have earned four units in their coursework. Those units are shown here, um, biology, chemistry, calculus one, and calculus two. And what I think is the value in this course is that we teach these disciplines through the lens of some very important global health issues, including antibiotic resistance and infectious disease. So this SMART is spread out over two semesters. Um, and again, at the, at the conclusion of SMART, students will have earned these four units. And so this is what the fall and spring semester uh, schedule would look like for SMART students, right? So in the spring, you would get credit for biology and calculus one. You'd also take an FYS course or first year seminar, which is required for all first year students to take, and then any elective of your choice. So to be a full-time student, um, you have to have be enrolled in for three and a half units. And so most students take four units their first semester. In the spring, you'd be enrolled in the chemistry portion, uh, which is Chem 192, calculus two, another FYS and another elective. And I just like this picture I pulled from my website. These are former SMART students who were walking across campus. They just finished um, Biology 192 and were walking to calculus together. So um, you take these classes with your uh, SMART cohort. And I would mention they integrated. So even though it says you're taking bio in the fall and chem, in the spring, the class is integrated. So you're doing biology and chemistry at the same time um, in each semester. It's kind of confusing, but it is an integrated science course. I'm happy to answer questions later if, if you uh, would like more clarification about that. As I mentioned before, we're teaching biology, chemistry, math through the lens of infectious disease, including HIV. And we also spent a lot of time this year talking about COVID-19 in antibiotic resistance, really trying to show students how science can be used in this interdisciplinary way to approach solving some very important global health issues. So I find that to be uh, one of the best parts of the SMART program. And feel free to ask questions about their experience, uh, ask the students questions about their experience in the SMART course. I'm excited to say that since last year's, uh, last academic year, the most recent academic year, SMART is now a part of the Endeavor program. So SMART has been taught for quite a few years, but just recently it has been converted to an Endeavor course. Um, it is a living and learning program. So students not only take uh, this class together, but they reside in the same residence hall. So lots of opportunity there to really get to know your peers, not just in SMART if, if you were to take the course, but other Endeavor courses as well. And it's also um, attached to a roadmap short course that occurs just before uh, student orientation in August. So happy to answer questions about what SMART Endeavor looks like. So what does it mean to be an Endeavor course? Happy to take questions about that. So because we're combining multiple disciplines, so chemistry, biology, and math, um, we have a great team of faculty who are teaching this course for our students. So as I mentioned before, we have two separate sections of SMART. So we have two chemists, two biologists, including myself, and two mathematicians. Um, and so again, you, and as a SMART student, you'd have access to a great team of faculty who are going to challenge you, uh, but also be there to support you as you uh, make it through your first year of college and your first year taking science classes at the University of Richmond. Again, in, in SMART, uh, we also try to build in opportunities for students to build community together. So one uh, fun trip we took last year was uh, to Charlottesville. So instead of peach picking, they picked apples. 
and this is in the fall. So this is a group of students that went on this trip um, from both sections of SMART. And also in addition to community building, do lots of skill development. So you can see this is uh, Dr. Um, Norris, a chemistry professor, um, teaching in our chemistry component of SMART Lab. So you, we do have lab, it's, it's lab infused or research infused course where students are conducting experiments. And at the conclusion of SMART, um, these are students from this past year presenting the findings of the experiments they conducted in the SMART course. Um, this is what we do every year. Well, students will, the semester culminates with these poster presentations. And I absolutely love to see how students put these stories together, how they synthesize everything that they've learned throughout the semester. Also want to reiterate that all students who participate in URIs and SMART are guaranteed a summer research opportunity at the conclusion of their first year. Um, these are fellowships that will cover, um, that, that will provide a small stipend for, for students to, to conduct independent research. And you also get an opportunity to travel to conferences. So as I mentioned before, I conduct research with students related to toxicology, uh, environmental justice and air pollution. And before COVID, I was able to travel um, and take a group of my research students to Anaheim, California to go to a conference called the Annual Biomedical Research Conference for Minority Students. I've been attending that conference since I was a college student myself, and it's an absolutely wonderful experience. Um, and so these are, um, most of them are former SMART students. Actually, they're graduating or have graduated already, the students in this photo. And I really wanted to point out Julian Starks. So Julian participated in URISE, participated in SMART, and he will be going to medical school in August. So super excited for Julian. And again, he participated in our program, developed this love of science, persisted, he did research. Um, and so it's just a wonderful outcome to see what our students do after they leave U of R. And this is him winning a poster prize, a monetary prize for his research presentation for the work that he did with me the summer after his first year in URIs and SMART. And I, I wanna uh, reiterate, so everyone who participates in URIs is guaranteed a seat in the SMART course, but we also open up SMART to students who did not participate in URIs. So for, so for some reason, students can't come to URIs over the summer, there's still an opportunity to apply for the SMART course. And I like to talk about our outcomes. Again, the goal of SMART in URIs is to increase retention of um, students from diverse backgrounds in our STEM majors. Um, and I'm happy to, to report that we have seen an increase in the retention of students, especially in the more quantitative sciences. We've done pretty well in biology with recruiting first-generation college students and other underrepresented students in biology, as you can see from, from the orange boxes here. Uh, but where we really made growth is in chemistry and math with a lot more um, students of color and first-gen students who are opting to uh, major in more quantitative sciences like computer science, chemistry, and math. So we're really excited to see these outcomes. And this is just me uh, with a, a photo of students that uh, graduated a couple of years ago who did SMART in URIs. And so I was always like to, to show the, the light at the end of the tunnel, right? So they, they started in URIs and SMART and it's always a pleasure to see their growth at the end of their time at U of R. Above all else, especially for me personally speaking, I really value community at uh, the University of Richmond. So I, I just really believe in fully supporting students, making them feel like they belong on this campus. Not only they can succeed at U of R, but also thrive. And that is the conclusion of my presentation. And I hope to see you all in fall 2022. And I'm gonna open it up for questions now. Please use the Q&A feature. If you have more questions after presentation, feel free to email me here. Um, I'm really easy to find also on the biology website, um, sjones22. And just to reiterate, um, the URAS application is due um, in less than a week on May 8th. So please, I encourage you all, if you have not done so, to apply. And I'm going to exit. 
and open it up for questions. Let's see if we have questions. We do. Good question. So Sydney asks, is diversity uh, mostly about being of color or first gen, or do women also play in underrepresented into underrepresented in STEM. Absolutely. So um, we really um, encourage all students to apply, right? We're not just selecting um, uh, students of color and first gen. And women are considered to be underrepresented, especially in computer science and math. So we do take that in consideration, especially um, for students who are interested in more quantitative sciences. But we really, um, the goal of URIs and SMART is to be a community of support for all students. So anyone can apply. Uh, is there a certain number of students that are usually accepted into URIs? Yes. Uh, due to this capacity of the program, we uh, typically take no more than 12 students uh, per session. So we can accept 24 total. We have made some adjustments to that in the past, but we have found that to build a, a good community of support. Having the smaller groups uh, does seem to be an advantage, but we, we have taken up to 20. Uh, but we, we for students who, who uh, for one reason or another, who aren't accepted to URIs, again, there's always the opportunity to apply to SMART. And our capacity for SMART is a bit higher than URIs typically. How many applications are typically received for URIs and SMART? Uh, that's a good question. So we accept about um, 20 to 24. And I have gotten as many as um, 50 applications, but I will say that not all of those were um, students who could actually do URI. So we've gotten applications from students who haven't committed, right? So you have to be a student committed and intending to come to U of R. So I'd say of maybe the 40 to 50 applications, uh, really we get down to about 35 who are like actually uh, appropriate candidates for the program. So I don't like to tell a, a lot of students, um, no, we haven't really had to in the past, um, turn down a lot of offers or turn down a lot of students for, for URIs. And I want, since we don't have any more questions right now, um, and I know this is being recorded, so in case students who can attend want some more information, I do want to give the panelists some time to talk about their experiences. So if each of you don't mind um, sharing your thoughts since you've just finished the program, um, anything that particularly stood out to you about the program or what your, uh, what your perceived benefits and, and the best parts of the program might be. Um, I'll just start off. Um, in terms of like the, the best parts that I found to be about the program is how We've been able to like develop a sense of community and being able to like take the same classes together and just like pretty much going through concepts together we're always like um teaching ourselves concepts if we like don't understand things and the faculty are very understanding so even if you're struggling with something they're always willing to help you out and it's just overall a great experience Um, um, for me, the the URIs, for me, I enjoyed URIs because it gave me, I hadn't seen the campus yet until the URI session. So it was a good experience for me to see campus life and see how that was. Um, I enjoyed meeting people and knowing people before I got onto campus as well because I got to see people who look like me and I also got to see my professors, which was good because I, um, I personally am nervous when it comes to talking to professors, so it was good to know them before I got into campus. For the SMART program, like Lindsay was saying, I specifically enjoy that because we see each other like every day. So <laughs> it was like, it was like we got really close to each other. Like the people even on this panel like are like my closest friends. Like I enjoyed that. And also the professors, like I could go to them for like homework, office hours, and it's just comfortable. And, and you always wanna be comfortable with talking to your professors, so. And for the question in the chat, no, we aren't assigned roommates. You Thank you, Morium. I was going to get to that. <laughs> yes, uh, to, just to hop in there. So if you are taking the SMART course and you apply to SMART or you, or you did URISE, you are 
or you're part of the Endeavor program, and that is a living and learning program. So all the students will reside in Laura Robbins Court. And so you have to um, live in Laura Robbins. You don't have to have be uh, roommates with a smart student, right? You can select um, a roommate from any student taking an Endeavor course, if that fits, yes. Thank you, Moriam. And then Beza, did you have anything to add? Yeah, and I think like Lindsay and Moriam said, a really strong sense of community, because as someone who, I did not do URIS, I did SMART, and I joined SMART a week after the semester started. And like even just a week of experience I had in the other STEM classes before joining SMART was different. Like usually the professors might be a bit distant. Uh, you just um, see your classmates just in the class, you don't even interact outside. But in SMART, since we have, like a lot of classes together and since we're all living in Laura Robbins court it's just like it forces you to talk to those people to interact with those people more than you would in another class and I think that really changed and shapes your perspective on oh social life on campus and everything and even as a black student on campus I think I get such a strong support system from my <coughs> classmates you know usually we share our uh, experiences we had from like maybe the administration or maybe our classroom experiences we've had. And I think that's like having a place where you can learn, you can share your experiences and just like even vent about what's happening on campus has been really different. And on the like science side of things, I think most of the first year students who are doing research are either people who did SMART or URIS. And that says a lot about they, they being ready and they being really motivated in order to grabs a lot of concepts or be ready for their pre-med track or something. So I think it really puts you in a track, but more better than as you would just attend another STEM class that was not smart. So I think, um, yeah, it really, really makes you motivated, really makes you think ahead. And you have a lot of great supports from your faculties. They advise you on what class to take, um, what type of research to take. And I think that's it's been really, really helpful for me. And I think they'll say the same too. Thank you. Also want to add if uh, for you rise participants, um, actually all three of these students will be on campus over the summer and serving as peer advisors for our incoming U, uh, URIS cohort. Uh, so we build in lots of opportunities for, for incoming students to connect with current students. So uh, we hope to see you in URIS this summer, uh, both me and the, the students on this panel. Um, it doesn't look like there are any more questions at the moment. I'll give it another minute or so on if, and if there aren't any more questions, we will conclude the webinar, but thank you all for attending. So I'll give it another minute or so. Sure. More, um, can you please give more information about the curriculum in the integrated STEM classes? I think you're referring to SMART. So what does that course look like on a day-to-day -day basis? Feel free to, to clarify if I'm not answering your question correctly. Um, so uh, SMART consists of, again, integration of biology, chemistry, and calculus. So the biology chemistry component is one class and then the math is a separate class. So in any given day of the week, so our classes are 50 minutes. Uh, we meet Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for 50 minutes for lecture. Uh, we have a two hour and 50 minute lab period once a week and a two hour and 50 a minute recitation period each week. So SMART meets every day. <laughs> uh, and then really building in lots of support there. So you would come to the biochem lecture for 50 minutes some days it's a biology lecture, some days it's a chemistry lecture. So it, that varies from day, day to day. You would go to your 50 minute biochem class and then either before or after, because we have two sections, so we stagger the times, you take the 75 minute calculus course that meets um, three days a week. Y'all correct me if I'm wrong, right? Three days a week, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday is the calculus. So it's two separate units um, and you do that 
in the fall and in the spring. So in addition to that, you're taking your FYS each semester and any other course of your choosing. Most students take another general education requirement course. So a lot of our students will take a social science like sociology or psychology. Some take leadership courses. So whatever your interests are, you can take any other course that you want. And most students take four units um, their first year each semester. I hope I answered that question. Feel free to ask another if, if I didn't quite get to the answer that you were looking for. You all have anything to add panelists? We spend a lot of time together in SMART, but that's what helps build the community. Beza, did you have something? Yeah, and I think another perk of joining SMART is usually there's a high competition for classes. If you're SMART, you're already registered for calculus, for bio, for your bio and chemistry course. So you don't have to worry about, oh, uh, calculus being occupied or not being able to take it whenever you want. So at least that's guaranteed. Also, I think more specifically, like for the SMART classes for biochem, um, the first semester, we, I guess the curriculum for the first semester would be specific to like antibiotic resistance, like that was on the slide before. And the second one semester for me, which is my favorite was HIV and COVID. Mm -hmm. So um, gen chem is just, you know, general chemistry. So that's just that part. But for biology, um, those are like what you would be learning. Yeah. Another question, do the SMART classes also satisfy the premier requirements like biology and physics too? Yes, so SMART is the equivalent of the introductory biology course at University of Richmond, and it's the equivalent for our introductory chemistry. So students who take SMART earn the same credit as other students who are taking uh, Gen Chem 141 or Biology 199. So you get credit for intro bio and intro chemistry. Uh, but there are several other pre-med requirements that students will have to take, which does include physics, um, organic chemistry, inorganic chemistry, other biology courses. And so to get to those upper level course, you have to do the introductory level courses first. And so you would take care of your gen ed requirements uh, like bio and chem your first um, semester. And then you get a chance to take other classes after your first year. And I'll also say that um, I, I do believe if you're going on to graduate school and med school, that calculus is required also at least one semester of calculus. So you've gotten several of those prerequisites out of the way with SMART. And you get to do it in a fun way, learning about interesting topics like antibiotic resistance, HIV and COVID and other infectious diseases. All right. All right, and I think we're gonna end there. Again, I will, um, my email is sjones22 at Richmond, really easy to find um, on the biology website if you have additional questions, but I really, really hope to see your applications for your eyes and smart. And I also wanna just thank my panelists for joining me today and um, hope everyone has a good evening.